I've seen it time and time again, going into a boss fight with hunters using Gathering Storm as the DPS super of choice. Shoot, even I used it when I thought it was the best DPS. And I've seen many builds talking about how the Arc Hunter build is the best build for boss DPS, and that's just not true, and I'm going to prove it in this video. See, Gathering Storm is still a good option and does good damage, but in terms of highest damage numbers, it doesn't live up to its solar counterpart, Blade Barrage. I found two main issues with Arc Hunter builds that solar builds excel at. First up, Arc survivability just isn't as strong as solar. With solar, we have access to a healing grenade that gives on-demand health and constant recovery, and other ways to gain recovery that is consistently giving us health even if we are taking damage. Now before you start talking about Assassin's Cow and about how Arc Hunters can gain both health and invisibility, I'm comparing these builds in terms of best boss damage. So both builds will be using Star Eater skills to increase our super damage. And the second reason I like Solar better, it also has access to Radiant, which is going to give us an instant 25% weapon damage boost that Arc can't get, meaning you can use your guns more often if you want to. We're going to break it all down in this video, so let's jump right on into it. Remember to leave a like if you found this video helpful, and if you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, hit that subscribe button. Let's jump right on into it. For this build, I went with the Solar subclass for two main reasons, damage buffs and healing. With the Solar subclass, we can make ourselves Radiant, giving us an on-demand 25% weapon damage buff, and then we pair that with massive orb creation to get an additional 22% stacking weapon damage, meaning our weapons can easily be outputting 53% more damage on a regular basis, while Arc, on the other hand, can only do a maximum of 22%. The other reason I choose to go with Solar subclass was for pure survivability. Solar offers many ways to give yourself cure and restoration for both on-demand healing and continuous healing. For this build, we'll be using our weapons to extend that restoration we get, plus it's also going to extend our Radiant, meaning more health recovery and damage output. Alright, taking a look at the super and the abilities. For a super, we're going with Blade Barrage. Blade Barrage can output more damage in a boss phase. As you can see, Blade Barrage's raw damage does 74,000 more damage than Gathering Storm. This can really start to show when you account for a debuff like Tractor or Tether, meaning that gap will grow to a whopping 97,000. This will really start to add up if you have multiple damage phases and multiple supers that you're using. Not only does it do more damage, it does it faster. Yes, technically Blade Barrage's animation takes 0.05 more of a frame to complete its animation, but its damage is instant. If you use Gathering Storm late in a boss phase, you might miss out on damage since it takes 11 frames to do all of its damage. Now this does have some variability. Since we are throwing a ton of knives at a boss, some may have a chance to miss if you are facing a boss that's far away or has a small hitbox, so you might end up doing less damage. In those cases, Gathering Storm might be the better option for total super damage, but for most bosses, Blade Barrage is definitely going to be doing more damage. Alright, taking a look at our abilities. First up, I'm choosing Gambler's Dodge. It does have a fairly short cooldown, and it gives us back our melee ability whenever we dodge near an enemy. Now since this is a boss DPS build, technically Marksman's Dodge is best, since it allows you to reload your weapon. I just like using my melee ability. Either one can work, just don't use Acrobat's dodge, not for this build. For a jump, triple jump is the best hunter jump in my opinion. Use whichever one you're most comfortable with. And for a powered melee, I'm taking Knife Trick. This will throw a fan of three knives, which are going to scorch targets and is going to pair well with our fragments. It does fairly good damage and has the overall best synergy with this build. I'm also going to take Healing Grenade. You can choose Solar Grenade if you want to use it on the boss for more damage, but I find having a Healing Grenade in your back pocket helps in a lot of situations. It can give us on-demand restoration, which we can extend because of our fragments. All right, now let's take a look at our aspects. First up, I'm taking Knock Em Down. This is going to buff our Solar Supers. For Blade Barrage, it's now going to fire six more knives, bringing our total from 14 to 20, which is pretty massive. Massive. Not only is it going to make our Blade Barrage do more damage, but we're also going to get the ability to fully recharge our melee whenever we get a powered melee kill. So it helps with boss DPS and on regular situations, clearing ads. We're also going to pair this with On Your Mark. This is going to give us three fragments, so that is one of the main reasons, but also it's going to grant you and your allies On Your Mark, which is a buff that increases your reload and handling. This can stack up to three times. You can gain a stack whenever you get a precision kill or when you activate your class ability, you'll gain all three stacks. If you use this in a boss Phase and you are running with the marksman's dodge now you can fully reload a weapon such as a rocket launcher giving you and your team increased reload speed and handling instantly making not only you but your team also output more damage all right let's move on to the fragments first up i'm taking ember of torches making our powered melee hits grant you and allies radiant this is one of the main reasons why something like acrobat's dodge isn't necessary since it does have a longer cooldown and it can make you radiant we'll just rather take ember of torches so that we can continuously use our powered melee 
which we can get immediately back if we are going to get a powered melee kill because of our aspect. And now that's going to grant us radiant. We're also going to pair that with Ember of Solace, giving us a longer duration on our radiant and restoration. Having that extended time allows you a little bit more wiggle room. I'm also taking Ember of Searing, making it so that when we get a kill on a scorched enemy, we're granted melee ability energy. This is nice, but we're mainly taking this for the added ability to create a fire sprite upon killing a scorched enemy. See, we already have a way to scorch enemies with our powered melee, but if we also pair this with a perk like incandescent on a weapon, we can scorch enemies on a regular basis, creating more fire sprites, which in turn is going to give us more grenade energy, but also we're going to pair this with Ember of Mercy, making it so when we pick up a fire sprite, we're now granted restoration. If you have the healing grenade, you do have a way to get restoration, but this does offer you a way to consistently gain restoration and make it so that you can continuously have restoration and always have that constant healing. And this is where something like this build just is so much better than an arc build. See, with the arc builds, yes, you can instantly start health regen, but that goes away the moment you take damage. Because of solar and restoration, you continuously heal, you continuously heal, and taking damage does not stop that healing. As long as you have this buff active of restoration, you'll consistently heal. And finally, we pair all this with Ember of Imperium, meaning we're going to want to use solar weapons. But whenever we do get solar weapon or ability kills, we'll extend the restoration and radiant that we're getting. So now, when we use our powered melee, we're gaining radiant and restoration because they're going to not only scorch, but we're also going to pick up that fire sprite. If we do get a kill, we're going to get our powered melee back immediately so that we can continuously use it. And if not, we can use our solar weapons to continuously extend this restoration and radiant. It creates an endless cycle of where you can basically run around as long as you have an add to kill and always have restoration and radiant, meaning more health and more weapon damage. All right, let's talk about ways to improve the build. First up for our stat mods. As a hunter, your class ability is tied to your mobility. So we definitely want to keep that in mind. First up, I'm choosing resilience. We're going to shoot for 100 because having that added 30% damage resistance is definitely huge for survivability in all sorts of content. This doesn't help your class ability, but I like the added benefit of being able to stay alive rather than just trying to dodge around everywhere. And the second one I'm shooting for is going to be 100 discipline. If you can't get 100, definitely go for at least 90. Our grenades definitely have the longest cooldowns and getting those cooldowns even shorter is definitely going to be key. The on-demand healing from our grenade is huge or just getting your solar grenade back is gonna be huge for general ad clear and damage on majors or bosses. And the third stat I'll lean into is gonna be mobility. I'd shoot for around 50 to 60, since the Marksman Dodge and Gambler's Dodge already have both short cooldowns at 29 seconds and 38 seconds. Once you get past 60 mobility with Marksman's Dodge, you're only decreasing it by one second per tier, which I don't really find that helpful. Whereas we can be decreasing our cooldown for something like a grenade, potentially up to seven to nine seconds, depending on the grenade. All for our armor mods, for our helmet, I'm going to choose Harmonic Siphon, making it so that rapid solar weapon kills are going to create orbs. We do want to generally create orbs so that we can pick it up and feed into our Star Eater scales, but it's also going to pair with our weapon searches later. I'm also going to take Heavy Ammo Finder and Heavy Ammo Scout, increasing our chance for heavy ammo and giving more to our team. If you're not struggling with heavy ammo, you could take something like Hands On, which is going to give you more super energy on melee kills. All right, for our arms, first up, I'm taking Heavy Handed. Our powered melee final blows will create orbs. Since whenever we get a powered melee kill, we can immediately gain back our powered melee, this can give you an endless cycle of generating mass amounts of orbs, which can help out you and your team. I'm also going to pair this with impact induction, making it so powered melee damage grants grenade energy. Again, we have access to basically infinite powered melee ability, so we can continuously feed into our grenade energy. This does have a cooldown, but it will give us a whopping 20% energy back, so it's nice to continuously be able to get back ability energy for our grenade. If you have room for it, I'd also take a loader mod. If you're taking a harmonic loader, your solar weapons will now have increased reload speed, which will pair perfectly with this build. All right, moving on to the chest. Choosing three resistance mods. It depends on the content you're doing, but I do like to do a spread. Mostly, I like to do a harmonic so we cover our solar. I like to do arc to cover arc and void to cover void. So we're getting a 15% damage resistance to most all elements that you'll be facing. All right, for our legs, we are taking the Star Eater scales, so keep that in mind. I'm going to choose solar weapon surge and I'm going to take three of them. This is going to give us a 22% weapon damage buff to our solar weapons. This is definitely needed for boss damage since it's the only way you can output the most amount of damage and it can be swapped if you are using a different heavy weapon. But solar weapons do pair perfectly with this build, so I definitely recommend using solar weapons whenever you can. Alright, moving on to the mark. First up, I'm taking powerful attraction, making it so we pick up nearby orbs whenever we use our class ability. Since our dodge has a pretty short cooldown, we should have our dodge back fairly consistently. And this is going to let us pick up all the orbs that we are generating or our team is generating, which is not only going to feed into our starter scales, but also it's going to feed into our weapon surge, giving us more weapon damage. I'm also going to take time dilation. Our decaying armor charge is now going to have a longer duration, and this is mainly for weapons 
weapon surge. This is going to increase our total weapon surge, maxing out at 30 seconds to increase it to maxing out at 45 seconds. And finally, I'm going to take Bomber, making it so when we use our class ability, we're generating grenade energy. Again, this does have a cooldown, but it is nice since we do want to use our class ability, which is going to pick up any orbs, but now it's also going to grant us a little bit more grenade energy, helping us cycle just a little bit more. All right, moving on to the artifact. In column three, we want to take elemental orbs solar, making it so that when we get solar weapon final blows, we have a chance to create a solar elemental orb. If you aren't running solar weapons, this isn't necessary, but it's definitely helpful if you are. In column four, we want elemental fury, communal pickups, and refreshing pickups. This now makes it so elemental orbs deal more damage to stun champions. When an ally uses our elemental orb, its cooldown is reduced by five seconds and we get bonus solar weapon damage. Plus, when we pick up an elemental orb or a tangle, we're granted ability energy to our least charge ability. In column five, we want monochromatic maestro so that we can use our weapons to buff our abilities and our abilities to buff our weapons. This is a 10% buff and lasts for five seconds. I'm also choosing elemental munitions, making it so that final blows with elemental orbs have a chance to drop special or heavy ammo. And who doesn't want more heavy ammo? All right, let's take a look at what weapons pair well with this build. First up, in the kinetic slot. We like to take a heavy hitter or whatever's best for the activity. If you have the exotic slot available, Izanagi's or Wither Horde are both perfect for raid-like boss phases. They output massive amounts of damage and are great for DPS rotations. Otherwise, Succession and Heritage are both great options because they can both roll with recombination and some form of auto-loading holster. And this is perfect for this build since we can do one powerful shot and then switch back to our solar weapons. For our energy slot, we want to take a solar weapon. Incandescent is definitely one of the better perks since it does pair well with a few of our fragments, but it's not necessary. For a trace rifle, I do like to run Acacia's Detection, which can roll with Reconstruction and Incandescent. This weapon just feels very good with solar builds. The Callus Mini Tool is also a great option since it can roll with Subsistence and Incandescent. Any other machine gun that can also roll something similar is also going to be a great option. There's two auto rifles that I do like with this build, which would be the Amit AR2 or the new Abyss Defiant. Both are great options. Abyss can actually roll with Reconstruction and Incandescent, or you can choose something like Target Lot or Sword Logic. All three of these perks are fantastic options, and I'm definitely choosing to pair this with the Reconstruction. If you do have the Exotic Slot available, something like Sunshot, Tiku's Divination, or Skyburner's Oath are all great options. Skyburners actually can scorch targets when hip firing, which again, pairs perfectly with this build, and Sunshot offers great ad clearing potential. All right, for our heavy weapon, you can choose an Exotic, but if you are running a Rocket, Apex Predator is definitely the best option. Some other great legendaries are going to be the Cataclysmic and Briars. These are all fantastic depending on the boss that you're facing. For our exotic options, Xenophage can be pretty good depending on the boss. Sleeper is also very good right now, especially when you're facing things like Iriut. Or you could run something like Galley, which is going to help support your team if they are running rockets. All are great for damage phases and champs. If you want more of an ad clearing option, Air Apparent, Unwavering Duty, and Avalanche are all exceptional and great options for running in most activities that you're doing, even if it's not a raid or dungeon. Not only does this build outperform the infamous Arc Hunter build in boss damage, but we also have access to more survivability and more weapon damage on a regular basis, making it easier for you to get to the damage phase. We have plenty of ways to buff our weapons, give ourselves healing, cycle and produce ability energy, and output massive damage to single targets. This is definitely going to be my build when I'm running raids on my hunter. Let me know your thoughts to the build, what would you change or how would you improve it? If you like the video and want to see more content like this, smash the like button and subscribe. That's it for me, peace out.